Congratulations on the purchase of your new Transtech skirt. In this video segment, we will take you through the steps from start to finish for the installation of the Transtex kits. Designed for quick installation, the two side panels can easily be installed by two trained technicians in less than 40 minutes or 1.33 man hours. To begin the installation, you will need the following tools for a two person team. These include one half inch impact gun, battery or air operated, with three inch deep sockets, one half inch wrench, one drill with a 21 64th inch drill bit, one Phillips screwdriver size 4, one measuring tape, one jigsaw for the light fixture cutout, one set of panel holders and one aluminum beam. Kindly note, you may also use two bottle jacks or an equivalent tool to lift the panel if you do not have the panel holder. Let's review section 2, the parts kit. Each kit includes two side skirt panels, roadside and curbside, 14 brackets, and one hardware bag. Note, this table lists standard kits. Quantities of items can be changed according to the specifications of the trailer and skirt length. Section 3. The Installation Preparation Before beginning, ensure you're wearing gloves and safety glasses. Safety comes first. Start by moving the trailer rear tires and bogies to their most forward position. Remove the lights. Then locate the first I-beam of the landing gear assembly. This is I-beam number 1. I-beam number 1 is the same for the 2330 kit. Validate that the 19-foot skirt fits and does not exceed the bogey's most forward position by measuring approximately 218 inches or 18 feet 2 inches from the center of I-beam number 1. Measure 266 inches for a 2330 skirt. Section 4. The Installation Layout Please note that the installation steps are presented with the 1932 kit as an example. All other layouts are available in the appendix of the installation manual. Place the first bracket onto I-beam number 1. This is bracket number 1. To install the bracket, simply spread the flanges and clip them onto the I-beam. Use the following steps for dry vans only. Starting from the first bracket, skip one I-beam, then install a bracket loosely attached. Next, skip two I-beams, then install a bracket loosely attached. Repeat these two steps until all brackets have been installed. Be advised, this layout should only be used for the 1932 T-Kit if the trailer's I-beams are 12 inches apart, center to center. Otherwise, refer to the appendix in the installation manual for different trailer specifications. Section 5, The Assembly. Using an impact gun and a wrench, only tighten the last four brackets onto the I-beams. These brackets are located on the straight section of the skirt. Before tightening, push the bracket forward so that it makes contact with the trailer wall. Make sure that each of the bracket stoppers are making contact with the inside rail of the trailer. The required torque range is between 8 and 10 pounds. It is important to note that the flanges will deform slightly under the required torque. Before torque, all walls forming the flange's body are straight. Good torque. When properly torqued, the flange's body will bend slightly, which will generate the required gripping force to hold the assembly. Over torque. Too much deformation will have a negative effect and will reduce or decrease the gripping force. Install the panel holders onto the indicated I-beams and place the panel in the holders. Make sure that the front tip of the skirt is at most 5 inches away from the first bracket's edge that is closest to the landing gear. Remove the protective film from the panel. Insert the aluminum beam between the two panel holders. Lift the panel to a maximum gap of 1 8 of an inch from the trailer's side rail. Use the bottom bolt of the panel holder to adjust the gap. Keep this gap consistent from the front to the back of the panel. When pushing bracket number one up against the landing gear, validate that there are at least four inches between the side rail and the bracket. If not, 
place the bracket behind the landing gear. Starting from the front of the skirt, secure bracket number one to the panel. Push the bracket forward to align it with the side rail. Using only one of the two required bolts, tighten it temporarily onto the I-beam. The inside technician must drill through the top holes of the bracket, while the outside technician puts pressure on the skirt. The outside technician must insert a bolt through each hole, and the inside technician must insert a washer and a nut. The inside technician must tighten the bolts using an impact gun, while the outside technician secures the bolt with a size 4 Phillips screwdriver. The required torque range is between 8 and 10 pounds. Secure the two bottom holes of the first bracket by repeating these steps. In order to create the front curve, untighten the first bracket and push the panel inward until the bracket touches the landing gear or until it is at a distance of 10 inches from the side rail. While pushing the panel inward, shake it well so that the rear panel is adjusted and the stress caused by the adjustment is released. Tighten the two bolts. We can now assemble the last four brackets located on the straight section of the panel. Starting from the front, secure one bracket at a time by drilling and securing the top holes only. Once the top holes of the bracket are secured, drill and secure the bottom holes. Be advised, while securing the bottom holes of the brackets, make sure that the panel is still in contact with the aluminum beam so as to get a perfect alignment. Slide the two remaining brackets up against the skirt panel. Rotate the brackets and push slightly against the panel to create a smooth curve and to create better contact. Tighten the flanges. Assemble the two remaining brackets to the panel by drilling the top two holes and securing the bolts. Drill the bottom holes, then assemble them with bolts. Section 6. The installation of the side turn lamp. Trace the shape of the light. Using a jigsaw, cut through the panel, then proceed to install the light and connect all wires. Let's review section 7, cutting out the fuel tank nozzle and gauge indicator for reefers. Only follow this section if required, if not, please skip to section 8. Carefully note that to be CARP compliant, the following instructions must be respected. The maximum dimension of the round opening hole is 5 inches. The maximum dimension of the U opening hole is 5 inches by 8 inches. The maximum dimension of the gauge indicator hole is 3 inches. Use a 4.5 inch hole saw to make a round opening for the tank nozzle. It is possible to make a U-shaped opening if considered easier for the driver to access the nozzle. Place the trim seal provided by Transtex around the opening in order to protect its edges. Use a 2 and 3 quarter inch hole saw to make a round opening for the gauge indicator. Insert the 2.5 inch round seal provided by Transtex. Your new Transtech skirts are now installed, and it's almost time for you to hit the road. But before we let you go, kindly refer to Section 8, Periodic Maintenance and Inspection. The following tables refer to the appendix of the installation manual and provide the sequence of spacing between each bracket for all skirt sizes and all I-beam center-to-center spacing commonly found in the industry. After locating I-beam number 1, use the sequence found in the sequence column to know how many I-beams to skip before installing the next bracket. Please contact Transtex for all other trailer specifications that are not included in the appendix. Note carefully that for these generic layouts, the front of the skirt must always be on the outside of the landing gear unless the distance between the skirt tip and the side rail is less than 4 inches. It will be our pleasure to assist you with any technical inquiries you may have. For immediate assistance, please contact Technical Assistance. <laughs>